Good morning, good morning, good morning. A strange and interesting dynamic has popped up. This is Glendon Cameron with the Institute of Economic Thought. And this is kind of a doozy. Since I put up that video, many people have been leaving comments like, you should leave the internet. Some people have actually been speaking to me as if they have the power to control what I do. You need to stop doing this. You need to go, you need to leave. As if I need their permission to do what I do. And I really started thinking about this because like last night and I saw these comments, I saw these comments and it's pretty much, why is this YouTube channel still up? And how's this video is up? And it was just like, the comments had absolutely nothing to do with the content of the video, which tells me they didn't even watch the video. And I was thinking, I was like, why do these people feel that I need their permission to do what I'm doing? And I took that thought a few steps further. If they feel that I need their permission to do what I do, then they feel that they need permission to do whatever they do. And it was like, I've been doing a lot of observations and thinking about why people are poor. And this car rental business is giving me some serious insights because the line share of people who are leaving these descending comments are poor. Give you a case and an example. The guy who stole my 740i, let me talk about him. He is a convicted felon that got pulled over in a car that was reported stolen with a weapon. That is five years in the state of Georgia. If I have anything to do with it, he's going to get 10 because I'm going to actually go to court and speak on that. But this guy's a convicted felon living in a hotel, was renting a car, then stole a car. And this guy feels that he's better than me. See, I'm beginning to see like right now in 2021, it is easier than any time in history to get rich right now in your pocket. You have access to more information than your great, your grandfather, your, your grand, your great grandfather and your great, great grandfather combined. You're literally walking around with so much information in your pocket on your cell phone and I actually can answer the question why people are not accessing this information. 2016, I gave away a bunch of free courses. There was the opportunity for a lot of people to level up. Just like there's so much information, there's so much information out there that can literally change your life. These people will not take action. And I'm wondering, because, you know, let me cook a little bit. I am wondering if the reason that these people are not taking action is because they feel that they need someone to give them a green signal. You can go ahead and do this. Because I'm just sitting here as a dynamic dominant masculine male who takes advantage of opportunities, I have never felt that I needed permission. I got to think back to when I had a job. I was a hard worker. I showed up on time. I did what I needed to do. And maybe at that point in my life, I was that way. I can't remember because I was operating in a job dynamic. But I do remember when I got laid off and I took 
control of my life. And I made a promise to myself. I was like, you're never getting laid off again. I'm going to go to these companies. I'm going to get what I can from these companies then dip. And that's what I did three times in a row. Went to a company, got everything, resources, connections, dipped. The second company did the same thing. Third company. And then the third company, <clears throat> I went off into my own business. And I've not had a job since. So during that period, I had a very warrior-like mindset, very kill and conquer mindset that is absent with the average person. Because I'm looking at these comments a little differently now because most of them are uneducated, unformed. Once again, poor people have very poor communication skills. And a lot of the people that I was talking about had a problem with that video because they know what I was saying was true. So I'm beginning to see that you have a huge pocket of people who are literally waiting for someone to say, you can do this. To me, that is preposterous, but I feel that is one of the reasons I should say, I shouldn't say I feel. I should say, based upon the observation, critical thinking and analysis, this is what I'm coming up with. That poor people feel that they need permission from maybe mom, dad, society, because the way these people are coming at me, it's like, I don't need your permission to make a YouTube video. I don't need your permission to do an online course. I don't need your permission to sell stuff. I don't need your okay. I don't need your... I don't need a green light from you. And I remember something that the guy who said, who stole the 740i, he said, we are on your ass as a collective of people who were on my ass. And once again, I, I did the video on the Lost Kings. I don't really care what you people think of me. That's something I've rid myself of many, many years ago. So I'm able to operate in a different space than the average person because I don't really care what you, the average person, thinks of Glenn and Cameron. I really don't care. I don't even think it's any of my business. I don't really spend a lot of time thinking because see, here's another thing that keeps people who are poor, poor a redundant thought process of low information diets, stupidity, and entertainment. I was looking, NFL, NFL games. I'm a fan of the NFL. I'm a fan of collegiate football. I love football. But I will not pay $5,000 to go to the SEC championship. I'm just not going to do it. If someone gave me the tickets, yeah, I would show up, but I would not pay $5,000. I love college football. I like watching it on television. I've gone to some games, but I am not that big of a fan where I would let that kind of money go to be entertained. My entertainment budget, like, I don't spend a lot of money on entertainment. Like, uh, I just don't. But the average person poor person who doesn't have my income spends more money on entertainment than I do. So that's one of the traps. One of the traps that keeps people poor is they're one looking for permission because I, I mean, I really thought about this because I'm looking at the, you know, cause the social media experiment is yielding more gold than I originally thought because as I get this feedback, why do these people feel that I need their permission to do what I need to do? Because if they feel that I, Glendon Cameron, needs their permission to operate, to make YouTube videos, to exist, to do what I do, then they must feel that they need permission from someone to do what they need to do. And it's a mind blowing concept when I sit down and think about it, because there's this expression, I'd rather beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission. That's my creed. I am not going to ask anyone permission. When I was on the Lead Bit Show, 
they was like, do you have anyone that you run stuff by? And this is foreign to me as a free agent, as a dominant masculine male. I don't have a committee that I run my YouTube videos about. I don't have a committee that I run my business ideas about. I do have a group of seasoned entrepreneurs that I talk business with, but from the YouTube standpoint, no, I don't really run that by, and I don't feel that I need that. I don't feel that I need that because so far it's been working out pretty well for me. So that's one reason. And number two, I'm able to operate without permission. I haven't watched the video by the road bearing wearing bitch, but there was some stuff that filtered out that he had to ask his mother permission before he made that video, which tells me a lot about him. He's not a independent free thinker. He is a road wearing little bitch that is incapable of critical analysis. Once again, his take on the video was, it showed his lack of intellectual rigor. Um, I am looking at all these people who need permission or okay or an acceptance from the general populations. I'm gonna tell you something. If you can get rid of whatever that little quirk it is where you need social permission to move forward or social acceptance. Um, you know, I'm into BDSM and I say that in a public forum. I am not ashamed of that. And a lot of people don't like this. Like, I don't really care. That's my jam. I like it. I have a lot of fun. I actually got into some of it last night. And since I am a true independent, and what I mean by that is I have my own company. So you can't cancel Glendon Cameron. I, I, I know that really just irked so many people that they couldn't get at my money. That irked these people because they're used to creating these outrage campaigns and impacting like what happened to John Gruden. He sent a few emails and he lost a $10 million a year job. I would never ever put myself in the position where public opinion can impact my money. I would never be in that situation. So one of the things that I am coming to understand and I'm coming to get to know with this permission thing, because it, it, it's boggling my mind, like why do you need to ask for permission to live your life on your own terms, on your own accord? As long as I am not infringing on the rights of someone else, why would I need someone's permission? Why would I need someone's okay? And that's a big, big thing right now, because like I said, the way these people are coming at me, I mean, I've literally had people tell me, you need to stop making videos, as if they had the authority to, to actually impact what I do. It, 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 it's crazy. Because once again, there are tribes and there are societies. And one of the things that I see, especially upon the lower economic strata, is emotion and this permission thing. Because this guy who's a convicted felon, who's going back to jail, felt he was better than me because I made that video. I mean, this whole asking and hoping and needing permission to live your life is a foreign concept to me. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. But what I'm beginning to see in the collective of the lower economic strata, that this is a theme that is running rampant and what it has done has enslaved and encapsulated people in a position of mediocrity. I mean, it, it, it's literally blowing my mind how the lower, once again, let, make no mistake about this. 
There are many people of various social economic levels who saw that video and didn't like it. But 99% of the commenting is coming from that unaccomplished, low intellect, lower economic echelon. I ran into some people who live in the building and we started talking business and stuff. And I'm confronted because like so far, one person recognized me from the TikTok videos. He was a delivery man for Best Buy, delivered that television. All these other people, high performing people, people who are building businesses, uh, executives, they don't even know because they don't consume that low intellect content. They don't know. There's a girl I'm dating. She makes six figures. She owns 12 properties, six of them outright. She, she doesn't know. And she's on TikTok. She, she's not seen those videos. And I'm looking at what you consume is what you are. And this is why I keep saying that the majority of these people are low level, low intellect, stupid people, because that's who they are, because that's the content that they consume. Because when I go to block someone, I consistently see cartoons, anime, world star. I never see TED Talks. I never see intellectual type content. I never, 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 never see that. All I see is junk food for the mind. And once again, I'm about to say something. If you are a part of the lower economic strata and you have not availed yourself to intellectual rigor, you don't have the mental capacity to thoroughly evaluate Glendon Cameron. You don't have the brain power. And one of the things that I'm consistently seeing with this lower economic strata is because this permission thing is relatively new. I never actually was aware of that until this whole thing jumped off. And this is why I say the social media experiment is yielding jewels that I did not know that would come out there because as I shape my training, this is something that I got to deal with because when I build out the masculine frame, I've got to teach guys how to get out of that needing permission to go ahead and live their life. I don't need permission to write Craigslist ads. I didn't need the permission. And, you know, just to tell you my business, I fucked three chicks this week. And I know a lot of people like, you know, there, there's a lot of woke people that's like, you know, getting a lot of pussy ain't cracked up to what it is to be. And I'm looking at the people who are saying this and the people who are saying this are incapable of giving a lot of pussy. So how would they know? How would they know? It, it's kind of funny because I'm seeing this wokeness. I'm seeing, you know, let, let me go ahead and drop some game. You know, when you're like 16 and you see Sally and Sally's cutest all to get cutest all the beautiful outdoors and she's got these perky nipples and you just get around Sally and your dick gets hard that my friend is biology that is your biological imperative that is normal right now we have men on YouTube who are trying to counteract your biological imperative with wussy conversations. God designed you to fuck women. That's what you were built for. And we right now have a whole bunch of woke people who are like, well, getting a lot of pussy ain't fun and it ain't. How would you know? Because I'm seeing the people who do it and I'm looking at their conversation. They, they couldn't do it. And I'm going to lay out why they can't do it. Number one, most of these guys have jobs. Now, I'm going to say something. One of the reasons that I was able to do the things I did is because I owned a business and I didn't have to go 
clock into a job. I could set my schedule. I could meet chicks. I was meeting chicks at 4 a.m. in the morning. So with this permission thing, because this is a relatively new concept to me because I'm just sitting here like, why are all these folks actually acting as if they can tell me what to do? It was hilarious. It was like, and like, I would leave cryptic messages like, if you think that you can tell me what to do, you vastly overestimate your power in life. And these people, and you know, and it just kind of hit me like last night. Wait a minute, if they feel that I need their permission, that means that they in turn need permission from somebody, some organization, some system, something to go out and be successful. It is a mind blowing concept when you look at it, but when you start to look at the pyramid of success, I am probably in the top 5%. I'm not in the top 0.5%. So 0.5%, that's the billionaire class. Uh, I'm in the millionaire class. That's the 0.5%, that's the po that's 5%, the top 5%, I would say globally, I'm in the top 5%. And then when you look down, that's the, you know, I'm past the, the 10% because the 10% the is the buffer zone between the lower economic strata and the billionaire class. And the, this, the 90, once again, that 10%, that 10% of society is the reason for our laws, the reason for our code enforcement. They do a lot of the dirty work that the billionaire class doesn't have to do, doesn't have to do at all. And once you get up here and you can look down, you start to see a lot of crazy stuff. You start to understand things because my grandmother, her name was Maddie Cameron. Rest in peace, grandmother, is the reason that I am successful because I learned how to read. And going back to my video of poor communication skills, and you know, I'm gonna do another video. I'm not gonna get too deep into it talking about why people wanna be liked. Because once you can rid yourself of wanting to be liked, it opens up so much area for you to operate and to excel and to be exceptional. But now that up here, and I can look down, I can see a lot of things and this whole permission thing, like for me, if I met a woman that I wanted to marry and let's say her father was alive, I would not ask her father for her permission to marry her. Wouldn't do it. It wouldn't even come to me. Wouldn't even think about it. I would ask the woman, hey, you want to marry me? Let's get married. That would be it. I would never, uh, that, that whole permission is just foreign concept to me because I've been a independent operator for so long. I don't have to ask your permission to move forward. And if I met a woman and I wanted to get married, I would not even, wouldn't, wouldn't ask her father shit. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. So I wouldn't do it. But once again, I am a free thinker. I'm an independent operator. I am a warrior. I am a radical man. I am a disruptive man. So for those of us, and once again, there are not that many of us. Let's be really, really clear. As that video that I put up exposed, most men in America are pussies who are going out seeking to be liked, seeking acceptance, and this is why they fail. Because that is feminine energy. They're not leading with any masculine energy. And this whole permission thing is very, very feminine. Very, very feminine. I, in the video on Lost Kings, I put out that 62% of American women have rape fantasies. Now, what does that mean? As you dive into it and you get started to get analytical, that means 62% of American women are submissive. 
to be brutally raped is a submissive posture and they're fantasizing about being raped which means that their internal their or their orientation they're submissive so over half of the american women are submissive yet 90 percent of the american men have problems dealing with these women when you start to look at the numbers and we start to have a greater understanding of what's going on you understand well i understand that a lot of american men are very feminine very um emotional and this is one of the reasons that they fail because you meet a woman and she's feminine and you as a man come in with your femininity and you repel each other. You just repel each other. And this is one of the things I consistently see because let's, let's, let's talk about a situation. If you're a man that have to ask a woman if you can kiss her, many women will be instantly turned off by that because they feel the woman that you should know that if the energy is correct and acceptable for the kiss them, you should be able to know that without asking. But many American men, and I was having a conversation with someone the other night, was talking about the disenfranchisement of African-American males. And then I hit her up and I said, well, what the African-American male has gone through in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, this is the what the white American male is going through right now. It is the same pathology, it's the same di dynamic. And she's like, I see this because we were having a talk and you know, she's like, I just can't date guys my own age. They're too immature, they have, you know, and I was like, the wussification of the American male. So guys, I want you to really, really think about this. Do you, so guys, I want you to really think do you feel that you need permission to be successful in life? And if you feel that you need permission, who do you need this permission from? I mean, I mean, it's, it's literally blowing my mind. It is literally blowing my mind and I'm beginning to have a greater understanding of why poor people are poor. And I'm about to say something that's going to be very, very controversial. In 2021, in the United States of America, if you are poor, it's because you want to be. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to struggle. But these are choices that you made. And if you're born poor, that's not your fault. You cannot understand or have any bearing on what your parents did. But if you die poor, that is your fault. Because like I said earlier, in 2021, at no time in history has it been easier to get rich. I mean, in the 60s, our grandparents didn't have these opportunities that we have today. So if you're in that lower economic strata, you're there because of the way that you think and the way that you behave. Not because there's some mythical man up in the sky pulling levers and controlling your life. It's not it's simply not true. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Go below, get the free audiobook, and I will see you guys in the next video.